Welcome to Sisters in Crime Australia and Murder Mondays, when authors talk about their crime craft. I'm Karina Kilmore, a debut crime writer, a journalist, and a national convener for Sisters in Crime. And we've been celebrating women's crime writing since 1991. Before I introduce Tanya Bretherton, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present. Tanya, hello, welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. You're a recognised scholar with a PhD in sociology. You've held the position of Senior Research Fellow in the University of Sydney for 15 years, and you've authored numerous academic publications. You're currently a freelance researcher and writer, which leads us into your life of crime. You now have four true crime books under your belt and they've received wide acclaim. Your first book, The Suitcase Baby, was shortlisted for a Ned Kelly Award, the Danger Prize and the Waverley Library Nib Award. Your second book, The Suicide Bride, was also shortlisted for the Danger Prize. And earlier this month, you won the Danger Prize with The Killing Streets. Before we start the questions, can you please give us your elevator pitch for The Killing Streets? I would love to. Um, it's like all of my books, it's a historical true crime. And it looks at a period of about 25 years. Um, but a lot of the book is focused on the 1930s. And it's a series of quite brutal murders that happened. Um, women were the victims. Uh, and it's been described as Australia's first serial killer um, book. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it, it follows from the 1930s, but it actually goes up to the late 1940s. Great. Let's get to our questions. Is there such a thing as justice? That really depends, I guess, so much on how you define it. it it's a, it, it's such a personal thing, um, justice. I think there's definitely, I think the legal system likes to think that it offers people justice. Mm -hmm. I think people that have experienced that legal system, either as victims of crime um, or perhaps people who've been accused of crimes, unfairly wouldn't describe that system as being just. So I, it's a hard thing to answer. It exists, I think, but almost as an abstract concept. Um, I don't know that people would say they've experienced justice a lot in the legal system. Yeah. How do you write about violence? Um, I'm very careful. I, I like to think that I'm very careful about how I write about violence. Um, it's purposeful, if that makes sense. So if I make the decision to describe a particular crime scene, for example, or an event um, that has some graphic elements, it always has to play a role in telling the bigger story. And my um, books are always about, uh, because my background is sociology, it's sort of history written by a sociologist, um, any violence is incorporated into the story with a much bigger picture in mind. Yeah. Have you been threatened about um, anything you've been writing? No, not really. Um, do you mean sort of personally threatened? Yeah, personally threatened. No, not really. Uh, I think... I'm sometimes asked, you know, how I manage the emotional, the vicarious trauma of reading about things. And I know that that's a common thing for lots of um, crime writers. I've never, um, I've never really had an issue so much with that. I think because I do view things with a, a degree of abstraction, sort of the photographer behind the lens kind of thing. And also I think there's so much time has passed um, between the events that I'm describing in my book. So yeah, I'm not as, as burdened, I think, by that. Yeah. Why did you start writing true crime? Um, 
I was interested in social history first and women's history. And those two things, I think crime provided a crime is about crime stories are about loss yeah. um, and they're about power. And both of those things are really poignant themes when you want to write social history about women. So it just provided a really good platform to talk about both of those things. Yeah, great. Why is true crime such an appealing genre? Um, I've thought about that because I'm I'm sort of a, a reader and a consumer of it myself. Mm-hmm. And it, it seems a morbid fascination sometimes. Um, and so the source of it, I'm not actually sure. It It's an exciting thing to write and it's an exciting thing to read and watch and listen to actually increasingly because we've got more and more podcasts coming through about true crime. Um, it's thrilling. It's a way of giving people a thrill, I guess. Yeah. How many drafts do you write before handing in your manuscript? Um, I never really stop drafting. Mm-hmm. I run out of time. So I am one of those people that compulsively will continue drafting. I'm never happy with it until and I, until the due date comes and then it has to go in. Um, I just can't leave it alone. Yeah. <laughs> How do you get on with the police? What sort of relationship do you have? Well, I I think I'm in sort of a, um, the the type of true crime that I write, I actually have had no involvement at all with the police Mm -hmm. um, because all of the source material I use for my books is in the archives. Um, So the police characters that I write about, they're long gone. Um, and the only connection I have with them is is really what the formal record about them says. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of, I have a very narrow relationship, I guess, with the police characters. How do you cope with knowing some of the things you research? Uh, I've definitely cried many times while while writing um, and researching the books that I research. Um, I think you, I spend so much time immersed in the material. It's almost like that's part of the journey that you, that you go on. You sort of go on a, you connect with the characters, you go through what they go through, you grieve with them and for them, and then you move on. It's kind of like life in a strange way. (laughs) Yeah. Similar to, I think, to being a reader of true crime, you do relate to the people, Mm. don't you? Yeah. What's the hardest part about writing a true crime book? Knowing that you're going to get it right because it, it, everything, even any history, is, is there's facts, but there's also interpretation of those facts because facts aren't, aren't fixed things. So yeah. you want to know that you get it right. That's very important to me. Um, I think because of probably my background in academic research, the accuracy of things is really important. What triggers you to write about a particular crime? I always like to discover a story that has a twist. So all of my books will have, I hope, what is a little bit of an unexpected twist at the end. So it's normally that. Um, But with every, so I'll often have three or four um, stories that I'm investigating and it will be the one that I gasp when I discover a particular facet of the story and then that determines what I ultimately um, construct a book about. Yeah, terrific. What's the biggest hurdle in true crime writing? Um, I think, oh, the hurdle. I would say, I guess I'd go back to my other point. The accuracy of things to me is really important. Um, But, and it's less a factor for me, but I can imagine it would be a big factor for true crime writers 
dealing with more modern cases, the impact that it will have on the people that you're writing about and the victims involved, mm -hmm. that has occasionally come up for me, but I, I, I almost have picked the historical true crime lane because I want to be able to write freely, unburdened by the complications that can come with um, the impacts. Um, because I would hate to think that I wrote something that really hurt someone. That would matter to me a lot. And here's historical true crime, I think, gives you a little bit of a buffer because yeah. most of the people, I wrote, they're long gone, all of them are long gone, but in rare cases there's been descendants. Um, and I have made contact with those people and certainly mm -hmm. um, talked through with them um, the books and what they're about. Yeah. What's your top writing tip and what's your top self-editing tip? Uh, writing tip, I would say, um, hmm. persist, persist, persist. Because I think I sometimes will, you do face walls when you're writing and I think a lot of like a lot of women, because it's sort of built into us, we're conditioned that way, we start to experience terrible self-doubt and some people talk it, you know, talk about the um, imposter syndrome. Yeah. Um, I, I like a lot of women writers, I think I experienced that. I think I can't do this. How, why did I ever think I could write this? Uh, this is terrible. Persist, push through because you can get past it. Um, in terms of editing tips, I listen to your editor. <laughs> I would say I, I, I love the relationships that I have with the, the people that edit my books. Um, their opinion I value greatly. I, I think also because my background was academic and also prior to that I was in the public service, I don't have a lot of... Um, I'm happy to take the advice of others. And I think humility in that editing process is really important. It's hard to let go of things because you believe in what you've written, but editors are really good at what they do. It, it is an expert. It's, it's a field that takes a lot of expertise. So, yeah, build a good relationship with an editor. Fabulous. Who are your writing inspirations? I... Um, I would probably say one of the reasons I got, I was, why true crime fascinated me as a, mm -hmm. as a field. I read Helen Garner's um, book on Canberra and Joe Cinque. And I think that was possibly a turning point. I read widely across lots of different um, genres. But yeah, I think if I had to pick a book, I would say that book really did influence me because I saw how an Australian author could do it with a strong, could write true crime with mm -hmm. a strong emphasis on context and history and geography. Um, because if anyone's ever lived in Canberra, and I did for a period of time, that book captures Canberra in a way I've never seen any other book do it. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And outside of true crime, what is your favourite genre? Um, I, like, I, oh, do I have a particular genre? Hmm. I like books that are more character driven than plot driven. I guess I'd mm -hmm. say that. Um, I don't think I have a particular genre, so I don't just read crime fiction or um, I don't read a lot of romance. I have to say I'm not a rom-com person. Yeah. I tend to fall more to the darker, um, more complex human stories. For a very, very long time, I loved George Orwell. He was always mm -hmm. a, haven't read much of him in the last decade because, you, you know, you tend to move on in different periods of your life. Um, and I liked F. Scott Fitzgerald for a very long time, but I think I've moved on from both of those things. So, great. What's your writing routine? Um, I write every day. 
And I'm also one of those people that carries a notebook with me. So I'm when I'm not writing, I'm always thinking about writing. So it's never not with me. Um, I certainly write in the early morning because, um, like a lot of writers, we have other jobs. We, we, you know, writing really doesn't, you can't, most people can't live on their writing income yeah. far from it. Uh, so I write around work and I love the early morning. I, I have for a very long time. Um, but I know people, some people write very late at night because that's when they're fired up. But yeah, early morning writing. Right. And our last question for today. How would you get away with murder? Ooh, that is a um, curly question. I've never really, um, I don't know. I, the book that I've got coming out is about poisoning. Mm -hmm. So across, if I use the four books as case studies, the four books that I've written so far as case studies, I would have to say poisoning is the characters within that book came the closest to not being caught for for what they did so it seemed to be a very efficient way um to kill someone uh but yeah I I as much as I'm research focused I, I wouldn't say that I research my books with a view to putting them into practice if that makes sense um so yeah Tanya, thank you for being with us today on Murder Mondays. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. Really enjoyed it.